We are located in the territory where the development and production of missile engines has been maintained for over 85 years. Every second missile in the world is powered by an engine from Energomash. And today we'll get acquainted with the ideas, technology, and of course the people who created the engine for the Angara. This scientific production facility employs more than 4,000 professionals and production facilities themselves occupy more than 90 hectares in which rocket engines are developed, tested, and produced. This showroom boasts displays of the main engines produced at this plant. This includes the legendary 107 engine from which the whole space program started and the world's first satellite was launched. Thanks to this engine, the whole world knows the name of Yuri Gagarin. You won't find such a history-filled museum anywhere else. The entire history of Russian rocket engines is gathered here. Thanks to these steel giants, the breakthrough of space programs not only in Russia but the whole world became possible. And this is the cutting edge of the newest rocket engines, including the RD-191. On a territory covering more than 1,000 square meters, dozens of engines are on display, ranging from the very first liquid engine built in 1929 and ending with its very young relatives like the RD-0255 engine, installed on the fourth generation of Voivoda strategic missile systems. Also on display is the engine from the rocket carrier Proton RD-253, the most powerful single-chamber rocket engine thanks to which the orbital station Mir entered space. Here you can also find the RD-180 engine, without which the U.S. space program wouldn't exist. The rocket carrier Atlas uses engines developed at Energo Mash. This is a production plant number 222. Here are the parts and the individual components for the rocket engines that are produced. More than 50 machines of various types and functions, along with hundreds of manufacturing operations, which Peter Sergeyevich will help us understand. Peter? Hello, Alex. Good day. What unique operation does the RD-191 engine go through before becoming part of a rocket? As always, it all starts with a procuring operation where we get the material that can work in unique uh, environments. That means temperatures up to 700 degrees Celsius, pressure levels up to 1,000 atmospheres, and vibration overloads up to 300 Gs. Therefore, there are special requirements to the obtaining of the preforms. Before the part can take its place in the engine, it will go through a huge number of manufacturing steps, including machining, welding, testing, and many others. One of the first processes awaiting the workpiece is EDM, which implies the technology of spot-on and accurate exposure of the item. It's very simple. A different voltage is supplied to the copper electrode and the workpiece. When contacting each other, the electrode and the workpiece form an electrical discharge that leads to a local metal evaporation. If the workpiece is not whole, then its parts are paired by the help of automatic argon arc welding. Many manufacturing operations cannot be done manually, so all the hard welds are done by a machine. After the completion of all the manufacturing operations, each detail and seam are tested for balance. The workpiece is spun at tremendous speeds to understand whether the actual axis of torsion coincides with the one given constructively. If, as a result of tests, there will be a slight deviation, the technologist, with the help of conventional clay, will determine the part of the workpiece that creates the imbalance, securing it to the unbalanced side. On the next stage, when the separate unit is assembled and parts are installed in the housing elements, we carry out a range of operations to exclude the ingression of foreign particles into the unit. Alex and me are now in the assembly workshop for the engines of our company. These include the RD-171M engine for the Zenith rocket carrier, the RD-180 engine for the Atlas rocket carrier, and the RD-191 engine for the Angara family of rockets. The first stage of the Angara is excellent thanks to the RD-191 engine. It is a single-chamber liquid rocket engine with a pulling force of 196 tons. It was created on the basis of the RD-170. It's recognized as the most powerful engine that runs on liquid fuel. Despite this, the RD-191 is environmentally friendly. The oxygen kerosene waste is not dangerous for the environment. The working gas is formed in the gasifier, which is then fed into the turbine. 
The working temperature of the gas is above 500 degrees Celsius. Its pressure is around 400 atmospheres. After leaving the turbine, the gas enters the combustion chamber, mixes with the kerosene, ignites, and e ejects through the nozzle, forming a thrust. That is how the engine operates. The interesting thing about this engine is that it can work in 100% mode. That is its nominal mode. Before the deep throttling mode, it's about 30%. Not a single liquid rocket engine in the world can do what the 191 engine does. But this was the exact technical task put forward by the Khrunichev Center for the RD-191 engine of the Angara rocket. The most important event in the career of any rocket engine, except the launch itself, is the final firing test where the work of the whole engine is checked. Firing tests begin with the cold swing in which the nozzle mimics the movements according to the flight cyclogram. The cameras are deflected by the rudder drives by two degrees. This is how they check for the efficiency of all systems controlling the thrust vector of the future launch. Right now, you see? To tell you the truth, I'm a bit scared because the movement is very fast. The RD-180 engines mounted on the stand are located in the armored chamber. After the cold swing, it closes and begins the preparation for the firing test. The test is operated from the control room. Commands will be transferred via intercom through devices scattered around the stand. The firing test lasts 201 seconds, during which time the engine goes through several modes on the cyclogram, starting from the nominal mode of 100%. Overall readiness. Start permitted. Attention, start. Switch to 95% mode. 10, switching to 63%, 20. This is a kind of experiment for the engine. The data will be recorded in the engine logs and then loaded onto the rocket carrier's onboard computer. 90. 100. Switch to 87%. 140. The engine's thrust is measured by sensors installed in the armor chamber. After launch, the exhaust gases are emitted into the gas duct, after which they go directly to the hydro extinguisher, a huge pool of water in the middle of which is a kind of exhaust pipe that is 100 meters high. The energy of the emitted gases is spent on winding the water in the pool. Gradually, the jet loses its energy and the gases mix with the water and become absolutely harmless to the environment, exiting the pipe in the form of white steam. Shut down according to the program.